we're going nowhere that, and that, that's not what we, you know it's yeah. it's not it's not good enough for for nigeria now let's talk about why the voter really need to go out and get registered and then when it's that time to vote come out to vote why is it important uh, um is it one who has uh, said it all if you understand that if you don't exercise that franchise you are determining the future of your children you are determining whether you have electricity or not you are determining whether you even have the right to complain or not because most nigerians really don't have the right to complain because they are pathetic to the system so if we really want if we truly desire change in our governance system if we truly desire to be the ones that determine those who represent us at the parliamentary level at the executive level if we really want that our voices be heard when major policy decisions are to be made then we need to show the politicians that we understand what this is all about that our elections our decisions will be based on issues not based on all those primordial sentiments you know uh, ethnicity religion this and that no that we're going to vote for you based on what you represent what you say you can do what you are delivering on so if if we understand that we have that power then you need less motivation from outside you find it and that's why i started my intervention that you need to find the reasoning from within the power the motivation from within that if this is about me i'm taking the decision uh, mr siaka said it. if you are voting you are voting for your children you are voting for even unborn generations so if you have a sense of duty a sense of responsibility to all of these persons you will do the right thing you will get up and vote i know the system is frustrating I myself feel frustrated, but still, this is our country. We don't have any other country. So we got to do the most that we can. We got to keep push, pushing forward so that we do our best. Our electoral system is not where it should be, as it were. Um, I cannot say that 2019 election is going to be the year of El Dorado for voter confidence, for ensuring that the process will be transparent and on on uh on, on tampered with why did you but, say that you know, because i let, when you were reading those statistics about what the number of persons that came out in 99 2003 and subsequently those things are in the air because really we know that what has been happening in the past there have been a lot of vote allocation in many places but we can say that from 2011 we have started to see improvements it's just improvement 2011 was better was fair 2015 was better than 2011. Our destination is still where I can sit down in the comfort of my room and know that when they say this person got a thousand votes, it did. It means that a thousand Nigerians, eligible Nigerians, voted for that person. Not that there was a problem within the system or there's some manipulation. We are not yet there, but we are inching close there. We are going to get there by the kind of laws that govern our electoral process. We are going to get there by the kind of logistics that we give to INEC, and we are going to get there by our system of justice. So if we are saying that let us have election tribunal, so that when people do election malpractices, the citizens will see that this person is dealt with. It will be a deterrence. There is no system where when people commit crime, they can get it, especially in Nigeria, where it appears that the more you steal, the better your chances of escaping justice. So it's the same thing for elect people who rig governorship election. They will stay there for a couple of years and they will be thrown out by the court. They don't refund anything to the system. They are not punished. We don't trace it who helped them, who assisted them. So the system is like you can get away with murder, more or less, until we get to that stage where when people know that committing elector electoral offense is like committing tax offense. Committing tax offense is economic offense and it's like you are sabotaging the state and the state will come after you big time. Until we get to that stage, we are, people are not going to take our election serious. So a lot of things need to change and it's evolving. We are happy that we are able to say 2011 was better than previous years. 2015 was better. We need to see a lot more improvement in 2019. But I don't think that we are going to arrive where we intend to be in 2019. But we should make it a lot more better, a lot more credible in 2019. Hmm. Mr. Wago, if we have to speak to the political parties, if we have to speak to the politicians, the candidates, in terms of the ideologies, in terms of what they are bringing on the table, in terms of making promises that they can fulfill, what would you say to that? What would you tell them? 
Well, first is that uh, the fluidity of our party system makes differentiation difficult. Uh, you are not able to really differentiate the political parties in terms of what they stand for. And the kind of um, campaigns that we have is one of razzmatazz, uh, where musicians are brought in, comedians are brought in, then the candidate waves something, and then at the end of the day, you really cannot track anything. In terms of documentation, you have no <coughs> brief from the political party that you can also hold, uh, used to hold them accountable. Most times, even when documents emanate from them, they deny it. So we need to insist as citizens, look, other elections that we have been talking about have been an elite pact. Elite pact because they decide, they, they share those votes like, uh, like uh, Arigbagu has said in Lagos and all of that. We must make 20, 2019 election about the people. And when, when I'm talking as if I'm inspiring confidence in citizens to, to cross the obstacles that have been put on their way, it is because I understand that if they do not necessarily do what is important for them, to become significant in the electoral process, it will continue to be an elite part. So what are those issues? It will be, the issue should be that, what is the reason why as a country, we have dropped from 70% to 22% immunization of children? Meaning that we have, we have cost, we are going to cause unnecessary debt. Uh, it just, just this year, 22% is where we are now for immunization of our children. Who is posing that question to the, to the politician? Who is asking them why in, in the world the National Health Act cannot be implemented to cover, you know, to cover uh, 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 every citizen of Nigeria and not just very few uh, civil servants? When are we going to pose the question about free and compulsory education as promised in Chapter 2 of the Constitution uh, it, it, that they said will be implemented only when, uh, when, uh, when able. We should take that clause off because we now know that we, until we take that clause off, the resources to provide free and compulsory education will be stolen by politicians. Those are some of the issues that we we'll continue to pose. We, we will continue to ask the question why politics continue to shroud Ajokuta's role, the, 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 the bringing to life of Ajokuta rolling steel, which has capacity to take 17,000 engineers off the, the, the unemployment market. Uh, uh, Joss Rolling Steel Mill, uh, Alaja Rolling Steel Mill, and uh, Oshogo Rolling Steel Mill are dependent on Ajokuta. We must remove tokenism from our dictionary. We are all you get is an end power, you win, and the rest of them. We must pose the hard questions of industrialization. If we are able to do that through forcing down town hall meetings that citizens are the ones convening, not the one politicians are convening, we will be able to pose the right questions and get the correct answers by that way, this whole question of ideology, because if you say ideology, there is no difference, there is no differentiation. Governments read from the same textbook all over the world. It is the citizens and their capacity to ask questions, to push for, uh, for answers that, that will make the change that we want. And that is why I'm saying, look, there are obstacles everywhere. You will see it. There are, co there are internal governance issues within INEC. There are irresponsibility of staff and the rest of them. It will not abate because we think it will abate. But it is our insistence on ensuring that they do the right thing and coming out to stay there that will make them do what, what we think they should do. Okay, Mr. Siaka, um, in the past we've seen, you know, the morale of voters being boosted by politicians with um, bags of rice, um, salt, and, and, and things like that. Even though some people have said that, you know, in the face of all of the issues around the economy and, you know, the empowerment of people, well, they, 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 they have to collect it. But on the other hand, what does this say about the future of that voter who is ready to take the bag of rice? just so he or she can come out to vote for a particular party or candidate. Uh, thank you. The issue of that bag of rice or even financial inducement goes down to uh, the moral decadence in our society. Because as I, as I sit here talking to the nation, I don't think that anybody, I don't know which amount are you going to give me for me to compromise my conscience. I have gotten the rudiments of leadership right from when I was small. That I had 22 years of banking experience. That alone has actually trained me to be a good manager. Anytime, any day, anywhere. Quote me. Many people see, are that lucky. 
Some people would say, you know, not many people are that lucky. And so if they come with the bread or the butter, you know, you have to take what you have seen or what you are seeing. No. No, I may disagree with you. Not lucky. If you have your conscience, instead of me to go and take something from a someone who is not who doesn't have value, I rather go. I rather go and do something meaner job to survive. Please, let us not mix things. Please, let us not mix things. If you lack competence, you lack it. You know. Uh, let me with all the respect. Our father, with all due respect to them. They have tried their possible best to sacrifice for our survival. And that's why today we are here laughing. It has now reached our turn who claim we have had a, a, a highest qualification of academic qualification in the land. But we are not displaying at all. At all. Look at even last time they, they accused some of the lecturers in, in uh, university that they cannot even write a proposal to assess UBE fund. Imagine that. Look at the issue of the teachers in Kaduna State. That one set, they set an exam of primary, uh, 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 student exam for uh, which you could not pass. And some people are still begging on their behalf. Because this is still going down to that level. Until we sit up and rise up to the occasion, we are going nowhere. Please, we are going nowhere. Honestly, I am I clean. I'm using this particular medium to appeal to every one of us in this country that we should get up and do the right thing. That is the only way. Otherwise, we are training our children that are coming to kill us. Some will say it's not my portion. Thank it you, be thank portion, you, Mr. It Siaka. Thank you so much. And let me just add Festus Akinboyewa's uh, uh, tweet. He, he's also, you know, concurring with what Mr. Siaka is saying. He says, we Nigerians must hear that we hold the key to our rise in glory or our fall in utter shame and despair in 2019. Okay. Time to register and vote is now. Okay. Thank you all for coming on this morning, Mr. Suleiman Arigbabu, the Southwest Coordinator Transition Monitoring Group, and Mr. Aldo Siyaka, a public affairs commentator, and Mr. Ezenwa Mwagu, Chairman Hi. Partner for Electoral Reform. Thank you all for coming. So we'll take a quick break, and Sunrise will be back in a moment. <laughs>